expansions I'm going to talk about this morning. Um, that's going to be, in fact, our heading briefly. I've given you all, and um, GV, you should grab one of those before you grab a seat. Um, I've given you all the reference sheet, and um, I'm highlighting because even though you know trig expansions, when you first learned trig expansions last year, this didn't exist. Okay, so the vast majority of you will probably not refer to this very much. Um, but, in fact, if you have a look at the extension one side, trig expansions, these angle sum identities, they're the first thing that appears. Okay, so I want to really quickly, since you need to, uh, some of you will, good morning, some of you will actually use this a fair number of times. I want all of you to be familiar with how this thing works. Okay? So if you want, the heading you can make is uh, angle sum identities. And one thing that I want to point out to you is if you have a look, uh, you've seen this before, um, when back when it was um, first published, but if you just quickly skim over both sides, one of the things that you will notice is that, um, and it was interesting when they were designing this, one of the things you'll notice is that number one, there is no explanation as to what any of these formulas is. Right? It's like, what, what is this talking about? What are, what are the terms? In, um, on that extension one side that you're looking at, you can see there's this, um, on the right hand side, it's a simple harmonic motion. And then there's this weird thing which has x and two dots on it, which is like some weirdo emoticon, which isn't an emoticon. And then an n squared and an x and a b. And you have no idea what any of those are. And they don't go to any effort to explain it. This is the exact opposite of the way Mathematics General 2 has what they call the formula and data sheet. And it's got like sentences all over explaining what the actual formulas are and how to use them. Okay. As calculus students, you're expected to be able to understand these formulas well, and this is really just a fallback. It's kind of, well, it's a memory aid. That's all it is. Okay. So, um, also you'll notice if you turn to say the mathematics side, uh, which is the A5, A5 side, you have a look at say, um, have a look at the quotient rule. Uh, it's in the third column, one, two, three. Third column, it's about half or a third of the way down. Uh, and you should recognize it because it's the only one which has a quotient in it if y equals u on v. Do you see it there? That one. Now, they've given you the quotient rule on the right hand side, but you'll notice it's not the form that we're used to seeing it in, right? Why don't we usually write it in this form? Because it's, 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 it's ugly. We use the dashes because it's faster. It's easier to remember. However, I've labored the point that the dashes, like, they're not the best way of doing the notation. Like, do we really, do we really know whether that is a dash or a one. Well, I'm gonna, if I wrote a one, I would write it exactly the same way. Like, who's really gonna write it like that? Well, maybe if you're really, really you know, uh, picky about it, but, but no one really. So this is actually a much better way of writing it. It just happens to take forever. And one of the things that you need to get used to, if you're going to refer to this sheet, is you need to get used to the way that they're using it so you don't get confused by using this sheet. That's the last thing you want in an exam, to be like in a mode and then you look at this to sort of like, oh yeah, let me just double check. And you're like, whoa, I'm even more confused. It's, um, it's not a good position to be in. Okay. So that's kind of one of the things I want to highlight with our angle sum identities. Let's write down the first one. Let's just write it down. You will notice that we usually write it in A's and B's. That's because A's and B's are easy to write and easy to say. But they have written them in thetas and what's that other angle? Five. It's a phi, good old phi, okay? So they've provided for us three of the identities, just the sums, okay? So this is sine of just two angles and they just made them whatever they want. And they've got the identity right there, okay? So we can quote it, sine, theta, cos, And you can see that they switch over from sine cos to cos sine because they're keeping it in order of angles, right? Just like we would if we do A, B, we'd go A plus B, then we'd go A, B, A, B, which means you've got to switch the sine and cos over, okay? Now, this is the sum identity for um, sine, right? You'll notice they haven't included the difference identity. And the reason why is because the difference identity, this guy, <coughs> I hope you recall from when we prove it, it flows directly out of the sum identity. Do you remember? A difference is just simply adding a negative, right? It's just adding a negative. Now, if I know that it's adding a negative, I can fit it straight back into this, 
and instead of phi here and here, I'm going to have negative phi, right? Now, why is this useful to me? Why is it handy to be able to say that? What can I? What knowledge can I take advantage of at this point? Yes. Sign is a not function. Therefore, uh, having a negative on uh, it's like negative f of x in sign means that you can bring the negative out. Good, right? And just corresponding to that, not only is sine an odd function, cosine is an even function, right? So cos of negative phi is the same as cos of phi, okay? So I'm going to go and I'm just going to write that right here. And if you want to make a tag for yourself, you know, just on top of where you've got the negative phi, I would write, this guy is even. That's why the sine disappears. And um, this is odd which is why I can treat the sign as coming out. Okay, simple, right? The cos and tan identities are exactly the same way. And you will find this over and over again throughout the sheet. You'll find results that you're like, are there are results missing. No, they're not missing. It's just that they're, the results that aren't included are easily gotten from the results that are already there, okay? Um, this is in fact one of the design principles that you can go on the board of studies. You can see they released a one-page document that talked about like, why did they include what, did they, what they included and why did they omit what they omitted? Stuff like this, for this exact reason, okay? They're trying to see, do you understand the way odd and even functions work? You should be able to get to here quickly from there. Let's just rehearse it with cos, right? Wait, so is, is sine theta minus y not so, so, all of these results, right, this should function as a memory aid to you, right? It does not really change what can be quoted and what can't. So, for example, uh, let me pick one out. Go to the mathematics side, and under, and they don't even call it the heading, um, under the coordinate geometry section, which is the second column right at the top, you've got distance, perpendicular distance, gradient, and the point gradient form of the equation of a line. And you can see, I hope as you're looking through that list, there are loads of things missing from there that you know you can quote. For example, distance, gradient, there's a third thing that you always learn at the same time. Remember? Quantum geometry, think. Things that you can do with two points. So, uh, okay, you're going a little bit further. I would say midpoint, right? Distance, gradient, midpoint. They're, they're the three things you can work out if you've got two points. Okay, you want to know how far they are, what the slope is, and where the middle is, okay? Now, midpoint is not there. But midpoint is definitely quotable, right? In the same way, right? Yeah, you've got, that's, that's division of an interval, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you turn over to the extension one side, which is a bit sneaky, admittedly, for your two to if you see, you've got the division of an interval in a given ratio. What's a midpoint? What ratio is that? It's one to one. And sure enough, if you put m equals one and n equals one, you get the familiar midpoint formula, right? Okay, so, so, no, we learned this last year. Okay. Uh, in exactly the same way, if you have a look back at the um, point gradient form, right, you see they haven't provided two point form there, have they, right? But that's because two point form is like one line away from point gradient form, right? All you do is just rearrange slightly so you have two fractions, okay? So, in terms of like, what can I quote, what can I not quote? If it's not on there, that doesn't mean you can't it, right? It's still just as just as usable, okay? But all they're saying is, look, we shouldn't need to provide this to you to aid your memory. Um, this thing could easily be like 10 pages long if they included every single formula you ever encountered, but it's a bit excessive, okay? Uh, in the same way that, for instance, I don't think, uh, where is it? I just looked at it. Oh yeah, okay, look. Um, under the derivatives on the mathematics side, you can see there's the solution of a quadratic equation, right? There's the quadratic formula, yeah? There's no discriminant there. They don't tell you what, what delta is, but that's because they don't need to, do they? If you understand what the quadratic formula is. Does it make sense? Do you see how the principles work together to create this thing? They didn't, they didn't see a point in saying discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac, because you should understand that. How come they haven't included the double angle formulas? Why haven't they included sine 2 theta? Okay, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight from here and I'm going to say, well, what if phi and theta are the same angle, right? So I'll go sine of theta plus theta. And I'm going to go ahead, sine theta, cos theta, cos theta, sine theta. And that gives me my result immediately, OK? So um, the difference identity and the double angle identity are just specific instances of the sum identity.
Now, uh, this is a great question. Thank you for asking those. Let's just, we were in the middle of doing the cosine one, right? Now, I wonder who remembers it without going to the sheet? Cos, cos, cos. It's, um, yeah, it's cos, 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 minus sine, sine, right? So cos, cos, minus sine, sine. And this is one of those wonderful places where, like in real life, if an engineer or an actuary or something wants to use a formula and they want to make sure they nail it, They'll look something up, okay? So if you're if you're ever unsure, you're like, I know one of them flips the sign, but which one is it? Well, here it is, right? You don't never, ne ever need to doubt. And um, I'm going to skip all the steps because I think you can see the way it works. If I now take the difference, okay? What difference will this make to this this part of it? Change the sign. Have a look here. Answer, answer. No difference here, right? Because it's cos and cos, and so it's an even function. What difference will it make here? And it will mean that this introduces a double negative. So that's why we're going to get cos, cos, plus sine, sine. Okay. Now, I'm not even going to um, go to the effort of writing the tan one, because I think you're getting the theme now. I will point out that the tan one there is the sum. You can go very quickly to the difference. And that's what takes you straight to angle between two lines, right? Because you're taking tan of. Um, at a difference of angles, okay? And so that's where, um, when you have a look at this sheet, right? You have a look at, sorry, there it is, right there. You have a look at that tan theta plus tan phi or one minus tan theta tan phi, okay? Um, that's your tan of the two different angles. You just want the difference. And so you're gonna get, like each of those is an M1 and an M2. Do you re recognize this from M equals tan theta? Way back from when we first learned uh, writing the triangle tree. Okay. So you can see how you can use this as a memory aid. Now, uh, what you need really is some time to work with these. And like I said, recalibrate your brain into radian mode. So the first thing you want to do is get to exercise 14.14D, 14 14D rather, which you did actually do parts of last year, but I said to you, now there are some pies and weird things talking about radians in this exercise. Just ignore them. Now is the time. Do not ignore them, okay? So go to 14D. Do, and this, I would say it's about half, or maybe less than half. Please do all the questions in radians. In addition to that, what I've emailed out to you about half an hour ago, or a bit more, um, is an exercise from a separate textbook, which is exclusively in radians. And it covers more than just the expansions. You've got some identities in there. You also have some just solve some standard trig equations. You know, so for example, when you see this, For the beginning, at the beginning, you're going to say, okay, I still only know the answers to this in degrees. Like, that's, that's all I can recall quickly, right? And so that takes some time, right? So I want to be able to get to the point where I see this. That signals radians to me, okay? And so I think, okay, I'm normally 30 and 150. I'm in first and second quadrants. What's 30? 30 degrees is pi on 6. And then I think about the other one, which is the supplement of this, which is 5 pi on 6. Okay. So you want to get to that point where you can recall those fairly quickly because you're comfortable with working in radians. That takes some time. 